committee meeting of May 19, 2020 to order. Clerk, please call the roll. <clears throat> Chair Lombardi? Present. Mrs. Charess? Here. Mr. Connell? Present. Mrs. Johannes? Here. Mr. Jones? Present. Mrs. Mayo? Here. And Mrs. Vada? Hey guys, I, I don't know you're here. your Just video, I mean your audio. Say it again. This is Vada. Can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, okay, Faintly. I got you. Yep. Hold on. Is that better? Little. No. All right, so uh, let's do the Pledge of Allegiance. I, I pledge, pledge allegiance to, to the flag of, of the United, United States, States of America, America and to and the republic, republic for which, which it stands, stands, one nation, one nation under God, God, God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty and justice, justice for all. For all. <clears throat> uh, is there anybody on for public comment or community comment? Hearing none, we'll move on to the consent agenda. Does anybody want anything on the consent agenda taken off? Okay, I'll entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented. So moved. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Fatima, did you get who did that? You're on mute. Sorry about that. No I got the second from Christine Charest. I didn't see who moved. I moved. I Chris, I moved. Christine moved. Oh. <laughs> Fran seconded. Okay. Fran seconded. Okay. Thank you. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? The ayes have it. Uh, moving on to the superintendent's report, district, district learning, distant learning Update, Superintendent. Okay, and for this, I've, I've asked the, uh, the three principals to be on board to sort of give a quick report out uh, as to uh, what they're finding in their individual schools and how we're going to uh, make our way to the finish line. <laughs> so, uh, Jen, would you like to, to begin? No problem. So um, we have successfully distributed all of our students' belongings pre-K through grade four um, through a series of uh, pickup days that we've had. Um, all of our pre-K through grade two students have uh, curriculum things to do until the end of the school year. We have a transition plan that we're working through with our middle school for our grade four students to make their way up to the middle school. Um, it started at the beginning of May with a reading, uh, one of our good night books from Ms. Lahar, and then Ms. Lopes did one last week. This upcoming Saturday on our Facebook Live event, we have a question and answer session with them. Then we have the grade five teachers doing a video introduction of themselves. Um, we have a grade four kind of like moving up parade that we're doing, and then we're kind of finalizing, finishing the year with kind of like another introduction to middle school for our grade four students. Um, so we have two parades tomorrow for our grade two and our grade threes, uh, where parents can just drive up to see, you know, their teachers and um, pretty much everything's going really, really well. We've had a lot of positive feedback, definitely starting to see parents kind of peter out. So we're being very respectful of that and they're a little tired. And, and we want to give a shout out to uh, yeah. Diana Comtois, um, our great. newest uh, uh, Golden Apple Award recipient, and proof positive why it's very important to have school guidance counselors at the elementary level. Yeah. So uh, it was great to um, uh, have her honored today, have the commissioner on board, and uh, right now Facebook is blowing up with congratulations for her. So it's uh, right. well deserved. Excellent. Okay. Absolutely, we're very proud of her. Um, John, middle school, would you like to fill us in? Uh, sure. Uh, distance learning continues to go 
very well for us. Um, we have the kids in a good routine and a good cycle, I think. Um, I think the governor actually helped us out with her kind of dropping one of those planning days or those, those vacation days into the weeks so that we can kind of have like a two-day cycle with kids so they kind of get an assignment. They have a meeting with the teacher. They get to work on the assignment. Then they get to meet with the teacher the next day to see how they did. Then they kind of get a break and then start over. So I think going to a four-day week um, that we've been able to do has been very helpful as far as having the kids in a nice routine. The kids have been attending their meets. The kids have been doing their work. They've been, they've been awesome. I have nothing but praise for the students of North Smithfield. They've done a really good job. Um, our teachers did a little video. I don't know how many of you saw it. They did a little dance video for all of our kids. The kids got a big oh. kick out of that. They thought that was, that was a lot of fun. Um, next week, I think it's next week, our middle school band is going to be performing with, actually middle school bands across the country. I'm not really sure how it's going to work. I'm going to be performing with the Marine Band. Um, it's going to be this like massive like performance. Um, I'll send you guys the link once I have it. But I asked Mr. Canassis, could we make this, like do they have the capacity for all of our kids to attend? And he said, yes. Yeah. So what we're going to do, I think next week in lieu of school, meets during that time for teachers we're going to have like our first virtual assembly of like all the kids and they're going to all hopefully log on and view that performance of the middle school kids with the marine band i think that'll be a nice thing for them um we're going to do our awards day we have a big awards day every year during the school day towards the end of school it's usually a whole school assembly we're going to do it in giant google meets by team where the teams are going to give out their awards to their kids um, in a whole team google meet and one of those last two days of school, that Monday or Tuesday um, that we have. We're doing a video tribute for the eighth graders that are moving up. We've reached out to all the parents and asked them to send in photos of their kids over their time in North Smithfield. And we're going to put that presentation for the kids. And we're going to have like a big Google meet for the entire eighth grade um, and have like a little virtual party to display the video to them for the first time um, as a tribute to them. Um, Mike Black. Great shout out to him. He stepped up and offered to donate yard signs for all the eighth graders who are moving up. Um, oh, nice. We designed a sign. It's got all the teacher signatures on the back of it. And then the eighth graders are stepping up on the front. And then it's got like a Northman Viking with a mask on. Um, in the front. Uh, so those will hopefully be ready next week for distribution. He has been amazing. So thank you to him. Um, and and uh, for the record, he did uh, speak to me and said that you were very helpful in that situation. Yeah, it was a little bumpy because it was, right. you know, there was kind of, you know, people doing their own thing. Um, but he reached out to me and together we, were, we wanted to make sure every kid was covered and that, um, you know, there weren't some kids who had them and some kids who didn't. So, yeah, he was great. And we worked that all, all last week and it was awesome. I'm actually Thanks. jealous of Mr. Lombardi. He's got a nice fresh haircut there that I could desperately <laughs> use. Uh, my hair is closer to Lisa's than it is to yours. I don't think that's fair right now. Um, the barbershops do open in Massachusetts next week, so I'm looking forward to that. Um, just to Suzanne and the special ed people, I know Christine Lopes has been to a bunch of IEP meetings. I've been to a bunch of 504 meetings. The virtual environment for the IEP in 504 was one of the things I was nervous about. It's worked well. Um, the parents have been happy. They've been getting the documents in advance. We've been meeting. Um, and they've actually been more pleasant than in person. So whoever was talking about let's keep meetings virtual, I may vote for that because in a virtual setting, everyone's always nice. <laughs> I haven't been yelled at once. So um, those have gone really well, very smooth. So good job by the special ed people. So overall, again, I think people are, it's running its course. People are getting tired. Um, we actually talked today at our admin meeting about summer reading and summer math, and we kind of voted as a group that we're going to, not do summer reading and summer math this year just to get parents a break of having to chase their kids around with the computer and make sure all their work is not completed um i think that was a good decision um but so they are running out of gas but it's been they've done a lot and um they'd be running out of gas if we were in the building right now so it's been good okay john thank you uh tim oh you Hang on, I just unmuted you. Yeah, I'm all set. Okay. We had a couple of interesting things happen. We had some students complaining about workload, and then we found out that they took jobs. So they were, they were working during the day, and then they were complaining they had too much work because they were trying to do a school workload and then work, like they're working at Dunkin' Donuts and Stop and Shop and so forth. So we had to let them know 
you're still in school. <laughs> um, it's just, it, it's just, a, it's a tough thing. It, it feels like you're out of school and you're not. Um, so we're dealing with that a little bit. Um, this, this time of year, it, it's, cr it's crunch time anyway. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot, we're chasing kids right now for their senior projects right now. Uh, normally we can hound them day by day, but it, it, they're a little bit elusive online. So uh, we're sending them out emails and so forth, trying to keep them in the game. But we have quite a, we have probably more than we've ever had that, that aren't quite finished yet, but we did allow some time to chase them down the last couple of weeks here and get all that in. So we're working on that front. And then we're also trying to plan the graduation too, which is a whole new uh, territory for us. So uh, as far as uh, awards, we have uh, the athletic awards are coming up. That's gonna be a virtual event. So Matt Tech is kind of running that right now. It's primarily for seniors that that, that event, that's gonna happen on January 2nd. Uh, January 3rd, we have our regular awards night. And that's going to be a virtual one as well. We're actually having people pre-record their messages and so forth. And then uh, I think Bill's going to actually, Bill Pepin's going to host that live. It'll be like a Zoom meet live type thing. So we're getting that thing all put together. It looks pre pretty promising. Uh, then th that Thursday, they're going to have a senior parade. Uh, and the reason they're doing that is because we used to, they used to do their march up at the elementary school and they kind of walk through the halls and so forth. So it, what they're going to do this time is they're going to have a parade that goes all the way around town. Uh, the police are going to do an escort for them um, and they're going to go by the different athletic fields and so forth. So those student athletes that missed out on those um, sporting events that they, they, they would have been playing they have like pic pictures of all the senior athletes that would have been there for, for those events. And then the culminating event will be the graduation, the drive-in style graduation. We're getting a lot of uh, publicity for our graduations, <laughs> drive-in graduation. And uh, I, I'm on a group uh, a consortium right now of, of all the principals and we're the only one right now in Northern Rhode Island that's doing this graduation drive-in style type thing. Um, the other principals are catching a lot of flack because a lot of parents want to see their kids graduate and it doesn't look like it's going to happen. It's going to be a virtual thing almost everywhere else, but, but in North Smithfield. I believe, uh, is, it, is it East Greenwich or West Greenwich that's attempting it too, Mr. Sanchez? There's, there's about, where there's us and about three other districts that are doing this to some, some way, shape, uh, or another. So there's a few more that have that have come on board, but anyways, uh, we we a lot of a lot of community uh, support. I'm getting I'm getting parents calling me up every you know what can I do? Somebody's donating a, a 40 foot movie screen. It's going to have an FM transmitter, so all the all the audio is going to be broadcast right to the cars. Uh, we're going to also simulcast at the same time, so it will be uh, on Vimeo. Uh, Look like I think it's a 10 second delay or something like that. So you could watch it from home. Um, and the big question right now is, is getting them out of their cars to walk on. I don't know if you've been following it or not. There's been a lot of uh, talk about what are the restrictions? Are they guidelines? Are they suggestions? Are they rules? What are they? Uh, originally ride came out with a stance that said kids had to remain in their cars and they could not get out under any circumstances and so forth. And then a reporter questioned that and it looks like uh, they, they, they've kind of backtracked a little bit and said, well, we're gonna leave it up to the superintendents to use common sense and good judgment. So we're hoping that Mr. St. Jean has common sense and good uses judgment. common sense and good judgment. <laughs> but uh, we're leaning towards right now, we're, we're leaning towards breaking the kids up toward the end and, and putting them in groups. Uh, the, the, right now the, the, the CDC says six feet apart. So I think 20 feet apart will be nice. Um, and maybe groups of 10 or something like that. We'll try to get them, get them up and across the stage. Uh, Mr. McGee, the, the official word is that we are going to follow ride guidance and we're going to um, um, take a look at uh, uh, how it changes over the coming weeks. We, we're not necessarily going on record and uh, saying that there will be a, a walk-up graduation. Hmm. So it, it changes. Changes from day to day. That's the frustrating part. No, People are getting frustrated. At least, at least when uh, uh, the, the, the reporter who asked these questions of the governor on Friday gave North Smithfield as an example of 
uh, of, of a district that has a plan that sounds very reasonable, but for some reason the Department of Ed regulations uh, um, wouldn't allow it. Uh, the governor was taken aback and basically said, well, what North Smithfield was planning, it, it made sense. And the guidance going forward is that the, uh, uh, the restrictions that Riot and the governor's office had previously put in place hold. However, districts and superintendents are allowed to, allowed to use common sense and make adjustments based on their community and their needs and their size. Uh, however, they also gave a very strong indication of um, liability. If anything happens to any of the families or the students and anybody gets sick, you know, you, you, um, you know, we're liable for it. So again, without getting into too many details, uh, there was a follow-up uh, uh, art. There's a follow-up article that's coming out in the Providence Journal later on this week uh, regarding North Smithfield and our plans. And basically, what we're saying, we are following Ride's guidance, and we're going to take um, other avenues under advisement as the state reopens and the guidance from the governor's office and the CDC uh, release as we go into phase one as we're looking at phase two and then how that would impact our graduation plans. Uh, but what I can say on the side is I've also been in contact with Ben's office regarding the liability and I forwarded that information to Mr. McGee. And basically what I can say is that graduation will be spectacular. Thank you. Everyone's going to be happy. And there will be many surprises. <laughs> One of them Thank may you. be my arrest. <laughs> well, I mean, to be honest, I did have to take, as we're plan looking at all this, and as I'm sort of trying to run interference with, uh, um, you know, the, the, the governor's office, and as Tim had said, his, uh, um, he's getting flack from the principals. I'm hearing it from the other superintendents who have a lot of pressure on their districts and communities. Uh, in which the regulations to reopen the state are much looser than the regulations to conduct a graduation ceremony. And that's the disconnect that's been causing a problem and a lot of political pressure and a lot of social pressure and community pressure across the state in other districts. Um, and to be honest, I did have to double check my contract to see if I had an indemnity clause <laughs> to see that if I was going to lose my house over this. Um, but we're going to do the right thing for the kids and the teachers, and I am wholly confident that the uh, graduation ceremony for North Smithfield, uh, as I said, will be exciting, spectacular, Whoa, and, um, and it will be live streamed, so there will be no escaping what we're doing, so it will be good. <laughs> you know, I, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No. Well, I was just going to, I was just going to say that um, I'm really happy to hear that, you know, I've been, I've been following this and tangentially involved, that you know, Smithfield is a leader in this regard, you know, and I think the kids have had a lot taken away from them this senior year, and we should absolutely make sure that we're working, safety being the number one priority. I'm a little shocked and a little stunned to hear that the Department of Ed is starting to presuppose before something happens who's going to be liable or not that's a i didn't know they could foresee into the future like that that's amazing um you know and i also thought that constitutionally the general assembly and the uh the school committees are in charge of the schools and it seems like we've been cut out of a lot of this to some degree but i think we should work with the department we should work and try and be within the guidelines but i also think that we're that we are it's good that we're trying to work with them but also provide a good experience for the kids who are uh, graduating this year so i just want to support tim and uh, uh mr mcgee i'm sorry and you know the efforts that are being made and i'm sure that ultimately we're going to be you know safety again safety is always the top priority it has to be but i'm sure we're going to do something that's good for the kids well, uh, what i what we can say is that whatever form or shape this takes 
we will exceed the guide. We will exceed um, uh, the guidelines that the uh, CDC is recommending for opening up uh, um, the states. But we're going to be, yeah, I, we, and of course, we have to watch out the executive orders from the governor to make sure that we're right. not violating the executive order. And I know we're not going to do that. No, we're, we're, I mean, we're, not, not, we're not going to violate them. That's what I meant to say. And, and we will also be, and, and the, the other reason, and, and, and I've said this a number of times, and so is Mr. McGee, uh, we have really good students. They've proven year after year, um, graduating class by graduating class, that they're respectful, honorable, and and I'm fully confident that whatever protocols are put in place, they will, they will follow and they will follow with respect. Hi, hi, hi. Mr. Chairman, I don't want to monopolize, but I had two questions at the appropriate time. Yeah. Okay, just one. Just on the senior projects, I heard, are the students in the past they presented to groups, are they going to go through that at the senior level this year? No, no, it's all going to be graded by the uh, senior project advisor, Mrs. Araman. It, it, was, it was just too problematic to try to get them to present. There's a lot of stress on them already. So we said, get it done. Just they videotape their, their presentation and Mrs. Allen is going to grade it this year. Thanks. The other question I had was just briefly, could someone just speak to um, perhaps Mr. Laha or perhaps Mr. Uh, or, or, or Ms. Rathman, anyone, just, just a little more about how the, I understand that we're speaking about the, how the IP process meeting thing. Um, how are we doing, or can someone just speak to you, Mr. How are we doing in terms of delivering instruction of our uh, students who have high needs and students who not have significant learning skills in, in our schools? I'm sorry, Bill, Bill, you just broke up on that last couple of sentences. I just, could someone speak to just a little bit about how we're doing with delivering services to some of our students who have, um, shall we say, higher learning differences, higher needs in terms of uh, special education needs? Want me to speak to that, Mr. St. Jean? Yes, please. Well, we're doing a variety of different things, Bill, um, some of which include at the elementary level packets that have been sent home to the families. But for some of our more significant kiddos, we are doing a lot of um, Zoom meetings when they're able. We've been providing virtual adaptive phys ed classes, which have been amazing. I've attended a few of them myself. Um, we are providing social services via Zoom. We're doing, um, I think we're doing a really good job of providing the services that the students need. And to speak to that, um, we are going to be providing distance learning um, for ESY as well this summer. Uh, based on just the level of need and safety, I don't feel, um, you know, I know the governor is opening up the state and things are happening, but um, we've talked about it as a district and even as a state, and we feel that there's just too many variables to um, have our, our most needy kids back in a building this early in the game. Yeah, I was wondering if you're going to, uh, I had a feeling that's where you're going to go, but I was curious about that. Yeah. The, 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 the state has request, right, has requested that in, in preparation for uh, a fall reintegration and, and opening, that during the summer um, ESY program that we bring some kids in to basically try out a number of different techniques and mm -hmm. disinfecting and um, uh, on the summer with a smaller group of students to prepare for a larger reopening in the fall. But to be honest, I mean, we, we discussed this as much as North Smithfield is often out in the front. In this case, we're happy for somebody else to take the lead and bring in their, their students over the summer, especially, uh, uh, especially when you're talking your, your neediest students or the most medically fragile student. This is not the, we don't, this is not the time for us to uh, experiment. So uh, we're, we're, we're going to just deliver virtually like most districts are. Um, and, uh, and, and again, I, I have to say, and, and personally, I, I, I attended one of uh, uh, Mrs. Mitchell's classes uh, um, at the, uh, the middle school. And one of the things they do on a Friday is a weekly check-in. And I was able to join the students and the one-to-one uh, uh, -one IAs and the teacher and just update everybody on the weekend. Let me tell you, my office is right next to these guys. Yeah. And 
you know, so I hear them during the day and I have a sense of what they're doing. But let me tell you, during this virtual meeting, they were more attentive and on task and just engaged, um, you know, than, than, than often I've, I, I've heard from the noise coming next door, which is a blast and they're having a good time and they're learning a lot. But through the, uh, 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 the virtual, uh, they were amazing. It, it, it was fun. The whole thing was organized. It ran like clockwork. The kids were attentive. There were a couple of students that during this virtual session, I heard them speak more than I did with them next door. Um, so there's a mix. There, there, there are some aspects of this in which some of our students are thriving. Great. Yeah, and I, I'm not, I don't doubt it. I just wanted to, you know, hear a little about what's going on. I, I know sometimes it can be, those are the kind of the guys who I was worried, you know, well, we're worried about all the kids, but that can be something that we really have to pay attention to. And I'm sure our staff is. I just wanted to talk, you know, hear a little bit, of, talk a little bit about the beach. I mean, I, ideally we want everybody back in session. That's, that's for the best. But, uh, you know, I've said it before, it's uh, um, to do this virtual and this distance learning uh, it's been surprising. I knew it was going to be good, but this has been surprisingly good. Unfortunately, there's a lot of other social things happening and uh, the kids and the parents are getting tired. You know, they, they, they really would like this year to end. They look forward to the day where they can come back to school and, 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 and have those uh, interactions in person. I do want to put a shout out too to the um, to the IAs because we were, you know, I think we were all concerned that um, it wasn't going to necessarily work, but the IAs are doing a phenomenal job. I've been in many classes, um, Claudia's classes, as well as um, uh, Christine Welch, and they are just exchanging information with students. They're meeting with students one on one. They really have stepped up to the plate, and I'm I'm just very proud of, of what they've done. Mrs. Mayo, did you have a question? Oh, you're on mute. Um, okay, is that better? Um, I'm really excited by everything that I'm hearing, and kudos to everyone in on the administrative team and the staff for creating the pathways for such good things to happen in our school system. And I'm excited about graduation too. That really sounds, I can't wait for the surprises that will be coming. But I'd like to give a particular shout out to Adam and his entire technology department, because without them, such success is just not possible. And we have to appreciate everything that they do to keep the technology running so smoothly so that the good things can continue to happen. So thank you. Absolutely. <laughs> thank you, Mrs. Mayo. Superintendent, is that it for your uh, presentation? Yep, we're all set, we can move on. Great, anybody have any additional questions? Okay, we'll move on to uh, the personnel appointments. This is for informational purposes only. Yeah. I, I'd like to give a, a, a shout out to uh, Mrs. Crowell, who's retiring mm -hmm. and uh, in fact, I have an exit interview with her tomorrow, so I get to to to, to talk with her and and wish her well. And um, you know, I know it's always a, a difficult decision, but uh, NSES is uh, absolutely going to miss her. Yeah. And and I I, I know I, I don't know if uh, uh, Mrs. Dana wants to say something, but I also want to just thank uh, Jenna Hinson. Uh, she was yes. our music teacher at the middle school. The kids absolutely loved her. Yeah. And I had such great joy. You know, again, my office is uh, diagonally across from uh, the, the, the chorus room. Just to hear the sounds and the music coming out of there during the day. Uh, she's just been marvelous. And we're sorry to lose her. But uh, she uh, she's married to a, a, a military man who's being transferred. And so... Um, um, that's the way it works. And for, you know, otherwise yeah. we would love to keep her on forever and ever. Yeah, I'm just going to piggyback on what Mike said. Um, Mrs. Curl definitely has been a huge asset. I've worked with her for the past 21 years now, and uh, she definitely still has it. Um, the kids adore her. She's extremely talented and gifted with all of our populations from our preschoolers all the way through our grade four students to some of our kiddos with more physical limitations. Um, 
She loved them all. She had such a calming personality. So I think she goes with a little bit of a heavy heart. I don't know if this was necessarily what she had initially thought was going to happen this year, but um, we're definitely going to miss her and celebrate her um, as much as we can. That's good. It's, it's always bittersweet, I think, with good wishes, but with regret when we have to say goodbye to a longstanding member of our team. Um, so I'm sure that we'll send a letter from the school committee letting her know how much we appreciate all that she's done for the students of North Smithfield because they and we will miss her. But we wish her a happy and a healthy retirement. Thank you, Ms. Mayo. Fatima, do the usual letter. Thank you. Uh, we'll move on to old business. Um, I know, I believe the superintendent wanted to talk about either the 20 or the 21 budget, uh, operating budget. This would be the 21. Uh, this is something that uh, Lisa and I wanted to uh, address with everybody because typically at this school committee meeting, we would be approaching you with uh, names of uh, teachers for layoffs. However, we're not ready for that because we don't know what our budget situation is going to be next year. Uh, there is such uncertainty within the state and all the school departments that we actually did petition the governor to move the layoff uh, date from uh, 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 June 1st to July 1st to give the General Assembly, to give the municipalities, to give everybody a sense of what the budgets are going to look like. Uh, however, uh, that was turned down and we do have to issue layoffs for June 1st. So we will be asking for a special school committee meeting before the end of this month in which we're going to bring forth uh, to you uh, uh, names of uh, folks uh, uh, to receive layoff notices. Now, and, and this is where it becomes extremely difficult because we don't know what next year's state aid to education is. Right now, we don't know exactly what the town appropriation will be, but we also don't know what the state aid to education is. What we do know is that the state of Rhode Island is in deficit at least $800 million uh, in lost revenue due to COVID-19. Now, as far as state aid to education, uh, there, there's a couple of things floating around. The uh, uh, School Committee Association uh, posted a one, one model in which the state aid to education would be based on an average of the last three years, all right? Which, to be honest, in our case, we end up with more money. Uh, because back in 2018, we had decent state aid to education, which was cut in 19, which was cut again or, you know, which, which declined a bit. Um, but with a three-year average, we actually come out ahead. I don't know if that would stick. Um, the, other, the other formula that I've been hearing is a, a, a straight 10% cut across the board which in that case, uh, that results in a, a, a $600,000 reduction for us. So what's happening with districts and, and what they're looking at is, is, is trying to do this balancing act because on one hand, you have to cover yourself for the worst case scenario. But on the other hand, you have so many people who are putting themselves out and working so hard with the whole distance learning piece, you don't want to demoralize everyone. Um, I've spoken with districts that are laying off um, one person from every department and one person at every grade level in every IA, classroom IA in the district. Um, I've heard from others that they're looking for to do pay freezes. Um, you know, there's a whole series of worst case scenarios that are playing out right now. And we don't have the answers as to what the budgets are going to look like. So, you know, I just, just wanted to bring that up. If you have questions, if Lisa wants to put in some information, um, but also prepare you that 
we may have to issue layoff letters by June 1st, which go farther and wider than anything we'd ever want, nor could we sustain, but legally, this is what we have to do. So, I don't know, Lisa, if you want to add some things, uh, if you have some additional pieces to add. Um, I think you're just about covered it, Mike. We're, it's, it's just so many moving pieces and we're just collecting the information as we go along and trying to make some semblance of it. What we do have, there is uh, money coming to us via the CARES Act, and that's 83% of our Title I, uh, which basically translates to about $200,000. Um, we're looking at coming towards the district. However, that has to be used for directly COVID-19 related expenses. So uh, personal protective gear, uh, extra sanitation gear. If we need to hire, say, say you know, we're, we're reopened uh, in the fall, but we need to do extra cleaning, extra disinfectant, we can hire additional custodians, you know, so that's what this money is used for. It's not, it cannot be used to offset reductions in other areas, whether it comes from local appropriation or it comes from state aid to education. Uh, it, it is a fixed amount. So outside of that, um, between Riasbo and RISA and connecting with the Department of Ed and the governor's office and, and uh, we're just trying to get a sense of where everybody stands financially. So uh, we know how to proceed, not just with layoffs, but also with general budgeting and planning for the next school year. Hey, Superintendent, thank you. Um, of course, the worst meeting of the year is always when we lay off more people right. than we need to. Um, it's 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 the worst thing that we have to do on the school committee uh all right well we'll obviously call the special meeting when you're ready uh, yeah, I, I, and i've already reached out to amy Wright about this and and started the discussion and you know collectively we're just going to uh brainstorm and come up with the uh uh the best solutions with the uh, uh least amount of impact on the on, on the kids so well, that's great does anybody have any any comments on 20 or 21 budget superintendent do you want to just briefly um talk about um the the fiscal year 20 um capital budget in regards to uh north smithfield elementary school hvac uh necessary or even higher level um, so we well, repairs replacement however it, right so so we, we made incredible progress with the um, uh, uh, our ride projects our necess necessity of construction as you know NSES was completed under budget and uh, on time our science labs were completed on time slightly under budget uh, we do have the pricing and we're ready to start work on the locker rooms, which uh, are also been, the costs have been offset because of uh, Alan CP and the work of our maintenance mm -hmm. department. And we've been taking some of those items that may be questionable as far as reimbursement. And we've been doing that work in house. So we've been doing everything we can to sort of um, stretch out this money as much as possible. Uh, you know, the, the, bond, the bond funds have been, uh, you know, uh, 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 applied. We've transferred $2 million in our, our school department fund balance towards it. But all of this, we're trying to save as much, one, because that's what we do, we just run very efficiently and frugally. Uh, but we also want to apply as much towards the, all the warm, safe, dry projects that have been pre-approved by the Department of Ed. And there's a, a couple of large ones that are looming. Uh, the first one that we were targeting was the replacement of the 60, 50, 60 year old windows at uh, the high school. Um, on some of the coldest days of the year, that building becomes difficult to heat. Uh, these windows are old, they're inefficient, they're falling apart, uh, they need to be replaced. And the Department of Ed has said, absolutely, you need to replace them. 
However, we have something else which has sort of risen in its um, in priority. And, you know, we've had over many, many years um, questions, comments, and concerns regarding the heating and ventilation system at um, North Smithfield Elementary. North Smithfield Elementary is about three years old. However, the way it was built, it has multiple HVAC systems. Each wing kind of has its own thing, which uh, it doesn't really have a bridge to connect them all. It runs very inefficiently. And the Department of Ed and the engineers have, have uh, uh, identified this as an issue with that building because of the inefficient HVAC systems that were put in over the years. So we're at a point though that we were looking at reopening the schools and again we don't know what the fall is going to hold. Um, however, we're in a we're, we're still in a, a situation that there's a um, you know possibility of spreading infection and this is an airborne disease. And what you don't want to have is a stagnant air in a room. So we need good ventilation. So Mr. Seepy has been really taking a hard look at NSCS. And there's a couple of uh, tracks that we can take. One is to just fix, repair, and replace the systems that are in place. Um, we do have pricing, initial pricing for that, and that it's going to run about $350,000. The other thing is to replace with a uniform system throughout NSCS, and that's gonna run about one point something million dollars. So he's put a package together uh, uh, for the Department of Ed to review a fix, replace, in place uh, proposal, the 350,000. We were pretty confident the Department of Ed will accept that and will make us eligible for a 40% reimbursement rate on this. We need to prioritize and move this forward. And I'm hoping to have uh, final pricing, uh, Department of Ed uh, 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 approval of it so that we can go to the school committee and the town council to get approval for this so that this work can be done over the summer and whatever September brings, at least NSES will have a, an updated, efficient heating and ventilation system. We will have to utilize some of the reimbursements we've already received and get approval from the town council to go into that revolving fund. You know, so as we're doing the work and money is coming, being reimbursed to us, it's going into that separate fund. There's already money in that fund that was put aside by previous uh, town councils. Um, we do have uh, uh, 225, $230,000 that have been reimbursed to us already from the NSES and the science projects. We need to go into that in order to do this work on NSES. Um, so that, that, that we're setting as a priority. We'd still like to be able to do the windows at the high school, but we probably won't be able to do as many as we originally anticipated just to assure that NSES gets the heating and ventilation system upgrades that it needs. So that, that will be coming up very shortly. Uh, information coming to the school committee and it will need to be forwarded to the town council to authorize the uh, use of the revolving funds that are held on the town side. And those monies have been put aside uh, from previous town councils for these purposes? For exactly these warm, safe, dry purposes. And, and, and the other caution I wanna give is that I know there's sort of an eye on the prize with the, uh, uh, our three main projects, the NSES, the science labs, and the locker rooms. Those were distinctly mentioned in the 2014 bond. However, we have more work that needs to be done that the engineers have identified that the uh, Housing Authority Department of Ed have already pre-approved. So there's at least a couple million dollars worth of warm, safe, dry projects that have been approved. My concern is that if we just look at doing these three, the three main projects and we take our ball and go home and we don't make a dent on these warm, safe, dry, 
we've already been told by the Department of Ed, don't bother applying for the next five year cycle if, you, if all you do are the three projects. We have to do warm, safe, dry. I know we probably can't pull off uh, you know, everything that was identified, but if we make a good faith effort and a dent in it, um, then we'll be in a good position to be accepted for the next five year cycle for the necessity of construction. And as I, I like to keep reminding, the next five year cycle is now what we're looking at replacing roofs. That's expensive. And I'd rather be looking at replacing a roof with a 35% reimbursement as opposed to just trying to come up with the money um, out of pocket. And we've been upfront with the council right along with all of this information. We've, we, the, the original plan that we put together two years ago, the public, uh, uh, everything we filed with the Department of Ed, all the public hearings, all the documents that we provided never varied from this, 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 this plan, this mission, this, uh, you know, originally what we were approved for. So we've been very consistent. What we have done, which may not have been consistent, is that we managed to keep bringing the prices down, down, down and get things done faster. Um, and so that's, uh, again, kudos to, uh, to Alan, his team, to Gil Bain, uh, to Studio Jade. It's uh, just been a wonderful partnership and uh, some great work has been done and, and it's been incredibly easy and drama free. Um, just, 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 just a good positive process. Great, thank you. Anybody have any questions? Uh, I'll move on to the new business, uh, the memorandum of agreement. So that's that's just a quick nod to our teachers because um, uh, our support staff, for example, they have uh, they get a couple of personal days, and if they don't use the personal days, it rolls over into next year. Um, our teachers in their contract have a use it or lose it, so they get two personal days, and if they don't use it, they lose it. Uh, typically, uh, when the weather starts getting warmer, you know, some people may be more tempted to take a personal day, especially if they're going to lose it if they don't take it. We don't have substitute coverage. We don't, you know, so what, we, what we'd really like to do is just everyone just, just keep doing your thing, doing the distance learning, uh, acknowledge that this is a very different year that people are working very hard. Um, and we would like them, if they haven't used their personal days, just to roll it into next year as sick days. Uh, very similar to what our support staff already has. So th this is just a one year thing. This is just a, this MOA is just for this year. Uh, we've taken a look. I mean, some folks, you know, through medical reasons, doctor's appointments, they've taken their personal days, uh, you know, in the fall and in the winter. And we're just saying, look, if you still have some in place, don't feel you have to use them. We will roll them to you uh, as, as uh, uh, sick days for the following year. Okay. Uh, does anybody have any questions? Does any, has everybody reviewed it? Does anybody want to make a motion? I'll make, I'll make a, a motion. We approve the uh, agreement as presented. Motion's been made. Is there a second? Second. Second it. Fatima, can you roll call it? You're on mute too. <laughs> Get with it, Fatima. Come on. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, Chair Lombardi? Yes. Mrs. Charess? Yes. Mr. Connell? Yes. Mrs. Johannes? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mrs. Mayo? Yes. Mrs. Vada. Yes. Okay. Motion, uh, 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 motion passes. Memor memorandum of agreement uh, has been approved. Uh, is there, does anybody have any further business? Mm -hmm. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Motion's been made. Second. And seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? The ayes have it. We're adjourned. Thank you. Uh, everybody be safe. Yeah. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. You too. Good night.